How well do you know about hydrogen? Did you know that hydrogen comes in different colors? This might sound peculiar, but it's true. And no, we're not talking about literal colors. These colors are a method of categorizing hydrogen based on how it's produced and its environmental impact. Intriguing, isn't it? The hydrogen spectrum ranges from green to gray, each signifying a unique production process. Green hydrogen, for instance, is produced through electrolysis using renewable energy. Blue hydrogen, on the other hand, is produced from natural gas where the emissions are captured and stored. Gray hydrogen is similar to blue but without the capture of emissions. There's also pink hydrogen, produced using electrolysis but powered by nuclear energy. And then, there's the less talked about but equally interesting red hydrogen. This type is also derived from nuclear energy, but with a twist in the tail. Among these, let's dive into the lesser known type called red hydrogen. Red hydrogen, quite a unique name, isn't it? But what exactly does it mean? Well, the term red hydrogen is more than just a catchy phrase. It refers to a specific type of hydrogen that's produced using nuclear energy. Now the red in red hydrogen isn't about its actual color. Instead, it's a metaphorical reference to the use of heat from advanced nuclear power plants in the hydrogen production process. In the world of hydrogen, colors serve as a shorthand to distinguish between the various production methods. Unlike green hydrogen, which is produced using renewable energy sources like wind and solar, red hydrogen harnesses the immense power of nuclear energy. This gives it a unique status in the hydrogen spectrum and opens up a wealth of opportunities for its use. So, nuclear power makes red hydrogen. But how does this process actually work? Producing red hydrogen involves a fascinating process. It's all about utilizing the heat. Now you might be wondering, how exactly do we use heat to produce hydrogen? Well, let's take a closer look. Imagine a bustling nuclear power plant. It's not just producing electricity but also generating a lot of heat. This heat, instead of being wasted, is harnessed to create high temperature steam. Now this is where the magic happens. This steam is then directed to a device called a steam methane reformer. Here, water, in the form of steam, is exposed to a catalyst. The high temperatures cause the water molecules to break apart into their elemental components, hydrogen and oxygen. This process is known as thermochemical water splitting. It may sound complicated, but it's essentially just breaking down water using heat. Thermo, meaning heat and chemical, referring to the transformation of one substance into another. Now you might ask why don't we just use electricity to split water, that's a great question, the answer is efficiency. The thermochemical process is more efficient at high temperatures which nuclear power plants are conveniently capable of providing. But let's not forget about safety. The production of red hydrogen is carefully monitored to ensure that the process is safe and the hydrogen produced is pure. Advanced filtering systems are used to separate hydrogen from any residual gases ensuring its purity, and there you have it. From a nuclear power plant steam to pure hydrogen ready to be used in a myriad of applications, from powering vehicles to heating homes. This is the beauty of red hydrogen. But the story doesn't end here. Once the hydrogen is produced, it needs to be stored and transported. This is another part of the red hydrogen production process that involves innovative technologies and solutions, but we'll save that topic for another time. That's how we get red hydrogen, but what makes it different from let's say pink hydrogen? Red and pink, two colors close on the spectrum, but how close are they when it comes to hydrogen? Let's dive into the details. Red and pink hydrogen are both produced using nuclear power, but there's a twist. Pink hydrogen is produced through low temperature electrolysis. This process involves passing an electric current through water to separate the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. It's a straightforward process, but it's energy intensive and that's where nuclear power comes in. On the other hand, red hydrogen production takes a slightly different route. It uses high temperature steam electrolysis. Here, steam, not just water is used and the process happens at high temperatures. The heat needed for this process is supplied by the nuclear reactors, making it a more efficient method compared to the low temperature electrolysis used in pink hydrogen production. So, while they might sound similar, red and pink hydrogen have quite different production processes. So, we've learned what red hydrogen is and how it's made. But what does the future hold for this type of hydrogen? As we look ahead, the potential of red hydrogen is vast. It offers a pathway to achieve carbon neutrality, a goal that is becoming increasingly important in our fight against climate change. By using nuclear power to produce hydrogen, we can generate energy without releasing harmful greenhouse gases. This gives red hydrogen a significant role in the energy sector, particularly in heavy industries and transport where electrification is challenging. 
Moreover, the pioneers in red hydrogen production are already making their mark. Companies are emerging with innovative solutions, investing in research and development to optimize the production process and reduce costs. From a broader perspective, red hydrogen could reshape our energy landscape, acting as a catalyst to a more sustainable and resilient energy system. From production to potential, red hydrogen seems set to make a big splash in the world of energy. Stay tuned to learn more about such intriguing topics.